Using an iPad as your desk setup is perfect and more efficient than you would think. About a month ago, I started using my iPad as my laptop replacement and I really didn't know what I was doing. And many of you left really helpful comments and tips and tricks on how I can better use my iPad. And now I'm really enjoying using my iPad over my MacBook for work and general multitasking. So in this video, I wanna show you my iPad only desk setup. But before we get into it, be sure to leave a like on the video so that you can easily find it later. All right, let's go. Now starting with the beast that powers this whole setup is the 2022 M1 iPad Pro with 128 gigabytes of storage and can record videos in 4K at 24, 30, or 60 frames per second, which is crazy. I mean, look at this. This was filmed on my iPad and paired with the iPad Pro is my Apple Pencil, which writes smoothly and makes multitasking with the iPad a breeze. Holding it all together though is the simple beige trifold stand case that has a slot to hold my Apple Pencil. What I like about this case is that there are two ways that I can use it. I can use it to type notes or I can use it to write notes and practice my art. To work on my iPad, I'm currently using a three-part desk setup, all from products from Ikea. I have one white Alex drawer that I use to store all of my gear, accessories, books, etc. Two height adjustable leg stands, and on top of these is an all black tabletop from Ikea. Though it wasn't my first choice, black is my favorite color and it fits the space perfectly. This is an extremely budget-friendly tabletop option for anyone looking to upgrade their desktop. Total, the desk came out to $180, not including the furniture risers. Now the chair I got for a steal. Any Anytime I'm looking to upgrade anything in my setup, I always research, research, research to find the best deal. So this is the Real Space Office Mesh Chair from Office Depot, and I'll always kind of brag about this because I snagged this chair for 50% off. Chairs like these can range from anywhere between $250 to even $1,000, and we don't have time to spend money like that. Now the monitor that I'm using isn't a monitor that I would recommend specifically for using an iPad as your setup because, well, it's a gaming monitor. My desk is also my gaming space, so it's kind of like my cozy corner. This is the LG Ultra Gear from Walmart, and it works great. I mean, I specifically use it for gaming. I use the monitor through the HDMI connection that I have connected through the USB-C hub that I connect to my iPad. There isn't really anything special about this monitor besides that it's a gaming monitor, but I did get it for a pretty good price. And overall, it works well for gaming and also just for working. Now the accessories I use to make working on my iPad efficient and functional are my mouse and my keyboard. Currently, I am using the Logitech MX Mini Bluetooth wireless keyboard paired with the Logitech MX 3S Mac Master mouse and I absolutely love this keyboard and mouse combination. One, because the battery life on these is amazing. I can literally go weeks without having to charge them. But two, and what I love the most is that they're Bluetooth accessories and I can easily use them to switch from one device to another. Sometimes I'll have my MacBook open and off to the side if I wanna have music or something pulled up and all I have to do is hit this button that is paired with my MacBook on my keyboard and my mouse so that I can easily switch between my iPad and my MacBook. Now onto what makes this iPad Pro extremely functional and almost a complete laptop replacement, the stage manager feature. Now maybe a potentially unpopular opinion for iPad users out there, I really like this feature. It makes it so much easier to get from one app to the next. If I wanna have multiple apps open, I can do that with the click of a button. It's brilliant. When you open an app in Stage Manager, it will open up to a specific amount of space on your screen, and all of your apps in the background will then appear on your left-hand side, with a max of five apps that you'll be able to see. You can have four apps open on the external display and four apps open on the iPad. Once you have your app open, you can resize it to these pre-structured sizes that Apple has in place. Which is where many iPad users are voicing their dislike for Stage Manager. I'm typically not one to have many apps open to begin with because I become easily distracted. Another positive aspect with using iPad OS 17 is the ability to use third-party webcams and not being confined to the iPad camera. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the iPad camera at all. I mean, it can film videos in full HD and 4K, but it has more to do with this. Bruh. The position of the camera itself. Because of the setup of the iPad, the camera is off to the side versus in the center. Unless you're using your iPad vertically, which I don't really see many people doing. 
but when you're looking at your iPad in the center, you can clearly see that I appear off-center even though I'm not. That's why the ability to use a third-party webcam is amazing right now because it makes your workflow more functional, especially for virtual meetings or video calls. Now you will need some sort of hub to connect your external camera to your iPad. Whether you want to invest in one like the CalDigit or Ugreen Thunderbolt dock, or you can use a simple one like mine that I picked up from Amazon for about 30 bucks, it just doesn't look as pretty. I still firmly believe for any of you who do simple multitasking or minimal computing on your iPad, you 100% can get away with using your iPad as your desk setup, paired with a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor, and you'll be good to go. However, I don't prefer to use my iPad for video editing. The software that I use is Final Cut Pro, and I find it to be more complicated on the iPad than the desktop version. But a simple software like CapCut is perfect for iPad users if you're doing any sort of video editing. Hey, before you go, if you found any value in this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below for more desktop setup and home office inspiration, and I'll see you in the next video.